and glory, America. Bonjour. Hi, it's Hugh Hewitt. I must say the biggest news of the day, you know what it is, General Mattis, right? I'm typing out a tweet right now that simply says, leading the show with news of General Mattis. In the context laid down by Peggy Noonan in 2016, in an essay that framed the politics of the past two decades, not Republican versus Democrat or Mattis versus Trump, It's the protected versus the unprotected. Still, still is. Still that way. Um, And it's not going to change. My question to all of you out there is, did General Mattis change your mind on anything? 1-800-520-1234. Peggy Noonan, while you're getting screened, 1-800-520-1234. I don't want to hear from people I normally hear from. All right? First-time callers only. I only want to hear from people I haven't talked to before. Did General Mattis change your mind? Because my theory is he hadn't changed a single mind. He blasted Trump for being a divider, not a uniter. He's never seen a president try to divide before. President Trump was not elected to be a uniter. We tried that with President Obama. The left doesn't want to unite. The left wants to dominate. President Trump was elected to protect the Constitution. You do that through funding the military to preserve us from foes abroad and protecting the Constitution through the appointment of judges, and he has delivered on both, and will continue to, that's why I support him. And uh, General Mattis, who grew up, and it's hard to overstate my admiration for him. I, uh, I spent a lot of time with him at the Nixon Library in 2019. A great interview, which I'm going to repost in the next break. But he was elected because the left in this country under President Obama had gone a long way to overthrowing the Constitution in ways unseen. A lot of that came out yesterday, by the way, if you watch Rod Rosenstein. It was, it was astonishing, actually. It was astonishing. Um, I, I, I just, coming after the looting in the streets, the lawlessness, the general disregard for the, the lawlessness, and I watched Rod Rosenstein. Uh, well, that, let's just go to the, the, the tape. Cut number 14. Former Deputy Attorney General talking to Lindsey Graham yesterday. Cut number 14. The FBI was a bunch of garbage, and they used it twice more. What kind of country is this? What happens to people who do that? Did you know that? You didn't know that, did you? No, sir. Do you think McCabe knew that? I I hope not, Senator. I do not personally know. Was he in charge of the investigation? Yes, he was. Did he ever lie to you? Mr. McCabe, uh, I, I don't believe, Senator, that uh, there were any occasions in which I identify that he lied to me. Okay. Did he ever say anything, looking back, that is perplexing to you? Uh, well, th- that's a very broad question, Senator. I had a lot of conversations. Do you think he was truthful to you? Uh, well, th- I believed, Senator, that Mr. McCabe was not fully candid with me. He certainly wasn't forthcoming. Uh, you know, in particular, Senator, the, with regard to uh, Mr. Comey's memoranda, uh, of his interviews with the president and with regard to the FBI's suspicions about the president. Uh, Mr. McCabe did not reveal those to me uh, for at least a week after he became acting director, despite the fact that we had repeated conversations focusing on this investigation. And uh, for whatever reasons, Mr. McCabe was not forthcoming with me about that. He has subsequently said publicly uh, in, in public comments he's made about the investigation that uh, his team had been leading up to certain important decisions for some time. Uh, from my perspective, Senator, they'd been in conducting this investigation for, I believe, approximately nine months. How- Keep going, um, Rod Rosenstein and Lindsey Graham now talking about whether or not Rod Rosenstein uh, knew the, uh, uh, wh- whether or not he would have signed the FISA warrant, which allowed for surveillance of the president's team, if he'd had his information. Cut number 15. Signed a warrant application in June of, uh, I think, 2017, to get the uh, Carter Page warrant renewed. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Have you looked at the Horowitz report? Yes, I have. I have it with me, Senator. If you knew then what you know now, would you have signed the warrant application? No, I would not. And the reason you wouldn't have is because... So all of it was predicated on that. All of it. So real quick, let's get some 30-second phone calls in. Uh, Bob in... uh, Pennsylvania. Good morning, Bob. Line one. What do you think of the General Mattis salvo against President Trump? Uh, General Mattis should have stuck to the military. I mean, I'm a retired uh, Army officer, served in Vietnam, and uh, 
General Mattis is not on the – it changed my mind. It diminished my opinion of General Mattis. No, I didn't change my opinion of General Mattis. just clarified that, that people in the military do not understand what's been going on because they're used to orders being given and followed, not to coups. Thank you, Bob. Dan in Columbus, what do you think, Dan? Uh, yeah, I, it did change my mind. It changed my mind. General Mattis, I was a Marine in Operation Phantom Fury in Fallujah in 2004, and every every one of my buddies that I've talked to that I was in the Marine Corps with, we all have the same opinion. We cannot believe the tone-deaf statement that General Mattis put out yesterday. I can't believe that, because we idolized that man, and we read through it, and it, we tried to understand all his points. Everything he said was wrong in that statement. I can't believe it. Uh, your, your phone is terrible, Dan, but your service is admirable. Thank you. Admirable. Uh, let's go over to Scranton, Pennsylvania, and talk to uh, Alan. Good morning, Alan. Uh, morning, sir. Um, I, too, am a veteran. I'm a retired first sergeant uh, from the Army, and uh, it didn't change my mind. And just like Facebook posts or anything like that, everybody just runs their mouth and has all kinds of rhetoric. But if your, your heels are dug in with your beliefs, you're not going to have your mind changed by anybody that has to, you know, wants to go on there and just uh, talk to be heard. That's all. And, and that's it, all it, I got to say. It hasn't, hasn't changed any mind. All right. That, that, that's my view. Uh, I, I got deluged with blue bubbles yesterday. What about just – because they know how much I admire General Mattis. And I just don't believe he understands what the left is doing or what the challenge is and that Trump was not elected to unite us. Uh, it's I sort agree, of like, sir. Yeah, it, it, remember, Lincoln was not elected to unite the union. There was no way to do that. He was elected to save the union. That's where the general has made his mistake. Jim in San Antonio, Texas. Jim, what do you think? Hey, you. I could not agree more. General Mattis is a disgrace to. Oh, stop, uh, stop, you, stop. He's okay. not a. Jim, he is not a disgrace to anything. One of the most admirable warriors in our history. All right. His words yesterday were a disgrace. They were a disgrace and not supportive of a great president and our Constitution. He missed the mark. Not very bright in his retirement. He should keep his mouth shut and enjoy his retirement. Well, we disagree. I would encourage him to speak out on military matters, and he's certainly got a a constitutional right to speak out, but I don't think he has changed one mind. Uh, Zero. Zero mind, but I'm waiting. I'm open to anyone. Dave, Lafayette Hills, Pennsylvania. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say, yeah, General Mattis did change my mind, um, but not in a good way for him. I I thought he was a reputable, decent general, and now I just think he's a disgraced former general. No, he's a reputable. He's a great war fighter. He's a tremendous man. He has, uh, I honestly, I've I've seen him with young Marines, old Marines. I've seen him swear in Marines. I'm going to post the interview I did with him again. He is a hero and a great servant, uh, put his life in front on the line for the United States many, many times. He does not understand this moment in American politics. But I don't, I, you know, again, I, I once heard him say a command is not a suggestion. A, a young man, a young lieutenant asked him, what if I got a bad order? And uh, the general responded, I'm very crystal clear in my mind, a command is not a suggestion. That's where his life grew up. A command is not a suggestion. If you read Call Sign Chaos clear, clearly as I did, you realize he's a military man through and through. He just does not get the left. He really doesn't get the left. Thank you. Let me go to Minnesota quickly. Uh, well, I'll come back. I'll talk to you after the break, friends. 1-800-520-1234. Did General Mattis change your mind? I don't think he changed anybody's mind. I got lots of audio as well. Don't go anywhere. It's the Hugh Hewitt Show.